The all-female Black Mambas are an anti-poaching unit that leads the fight in South Africa's northernmost province. Despite the danger, they don't carry weapons. Because you shone. These are the bobbies on the beat. They're unarmed, but they cover vast hectares and they're positioned all over the show, especially in hot spots and so on. They look smart, they speak well, they have manners, and, uh, and they've got, they're a little bit assertive, but not overly so, and what have you. So without them, my armed response team wouldn't actually know what to do. They wouldn't really have a role to play. My name's Amy Nash, I'm a captain in the Royal Military Police Reserve and I've been in the army for about 13 years. So there was a, a message sent to me from a friend um, who said that there was a project ongoing with Veterans for Wildlife. Um, I looked into it and what they were requesting was someone to conduct a, a leadership and command course um, for 12 members, black members. Um, and so I thought, you know what, I'll apply and that's, uh, that's how it all came about. What attracted you to the charity? So for me, um, I'd recently or fairly recently left the um, regular army where I had deployed previously to places such as Afghanistan and I've seen this actually through a friend um, and because it was a mentoring role something that I did very similarly to um, what I did in Afghanistan I thought you know what it's slightly different but it's something that I feel familiar to and I like to help people um, as much as I possibly can so that's what attracted to me uh, it to me initially okay and what where where did you go tell us about your experience with the charity what have you done so I deployed to um, Kruger National Park for a month approximately about a month period um, and I went out to go and assist with the black members the all, first all-female anti-poaching team and spent um, a good couple of weeks with them training them on, on their leadership cadre. so their sergeant's promotion course if you like I think the skill set that the, the British veterans have got is is needed tremendously here. Yeah. And also because, you know, they've been deployed. Most of the time they've been deployed, so they've exercised their training. It's not just people that have trained and, and hung around. They've, they've been places, they've done work, so they can bring those skill sets here. They're also multicultural as well. So we have, you know, we've got a, a tribal situation here with the tribal hierarchy and a lot of different African customs and so on. So we find the trainers from the United Kingdom seem to have a much easier integration with the tribal people here. The most important sergeants of the... Uh, the British Black forces members. have integrated but women into, the, uh, into all levels, in fact, for quite a lot longer than many of the other forces in the world. So, you know, that's an easy choice for us then. Uh, it, was, it was quite fortuitous for us that there were... Uh, women available from the forces, you know, veterans that were prepared to come out. And what skills of yours did you use, you know, and share with them while yeah. you were out there? So I would suggest um, the main skill that I delivered to them was leadership. And now this was unique for them, I guess, really, because the, the environment that they come from, they're not necessarily deemed as a leader, especially in their hometowns, if you like. And so I had to try and teach them, I guess, that having a leadership skill doesn't mean that you're necessarily telling people what to do and sitting back and doing nothing. You know, you are part of a team. You just need to have that leadership ability to be able to pass things up the chain, right. to be able to delegate, to be able to prioritise on the ground as well. So that was the key skill I would suggest that I, I delivered. What were some of your sort of best memories, you know, your, your, the things that really stand out for you about being out in South Africa? There's a number of things that stand out, but I think in particular was their their pass out parade, which sounds very odd, and I guess that's a very military term, but passing out from their course means that they completed their course. And we had 100% completion um, on the course as well. So every single female that we took, which was a number of 10 uh, initially, and then moved up to 12, all actually got their sergeant stripes. And it was something that was um, a different world for me. A typical military pass out parade was three lines, you know, yeah. very rigid. Um, yeah not much talking at yeah. all, not much movement, yeah. was with these ladies, they did a bit of drill, you know, a bit of marching, yeah. Yeah. and then singing and dancing ensued. Oh, it was nice. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, happy memories. <laughs> yeah. They were good, they were kind, yeah. And then even when they were teaching, they made us understand every lesson, because when we do theory part, they immediately took us to do the practical part. So yeah, they were best. You could see them growing as individuals, even in the space of a, a two-week programme. They came out the other end, you know, kind of bouncing, full of life and actually full of enthusiasm. So 
is really positive to see. I feel so proud because I'm, I'm a woman saving those, those animals. And at the beginning they said this is a men's job, but I proved them wrong that even a woman can do this job. Not all passing out parades need a military band. Um, what, what advice would you give? You know, what do you feel you've gained from being a volunteer for the charity? So, um, from a military perspective, I feel that there's that familiarity there. So, for me, the transition from leaving regular armed forces and doing something like this project was absolutely an easy transition. You know, the, the guys are ex-military themselves who, who run the charity, yeah. and the whole process just oh. felt very military-like in a way of how you got your deployment instructions, how you actually moved out to the country, and then what you were actually delivering out in the field as well. So my advice for those who are even considering it is to just go for it. It's not as fearful a thing as what people might think, and, and everything's in place. It's such a fantastic, great experience that it'll be a shame to miss out if you were tentative about the whole process, but it's yeah. great. You know, do you feel that it's sort of given you that that sort of sense as well that you're still using you know by using your skills and sharing them with people out there you know that's giving you a sense of fulfillment as well absolutely yeah so since leaving um i think since leaving regular service i think this is why i actually joined the army reserves is because that sense of purpose i haven't been able to find i guess yeah um in civilian street there's a number of jobs and um, different areas that i can work in and have been offered to work in but it's not quite the same so the kind of sense of achievement that I got from working with Veterans for Wildlife was second to none. You know, it's, it reminded me why I joined the army in the first yeah. place and actually why I then later in my career commissioned because I want to coach, guide, mentor, help people, you know, throughout their own careers and their own progression. Yeah. So I definitely got that from Veterans for Wildlife. You know, that pretty much anything I can possibly do to support it, I will because it's it's a great cause. It's not just a case of raising a profile for an unknown charity. It's it's a fantastic cause. And not only what the ladies are doing, you know, the, the ladies that I worked with in the Black Mambas, but everything else that they're doing, especially working with um, those who are suffering with things like PTSD, it what they're doing is great and I like to support yeah. it.